guys. Today I'm gonna speak about uh, the difference between Kelly's Criterion and uh, Ratcheting. Um, why I don't prefer to use Kelly's Criterion and when I use singles um, or um, instead of Kelly's Criterion, when I don't use progressive um, betting, I use Ratcheting. Um, first I learned from, uh, from what Ratcheting means from uh, SoccerWidow.com um, and then we will speak um, about how we can improve our hockey model because the last two weeks it seems that um, it's not producing the results that we want. Um, but um, it's very important to mention that um, we have a portfolio um, that we spread the risk. So, I mean, we have a model in basketball, another model in football, another model in hockey. So it's important um, to have a portfolio um, that we can... Uh, bet in different sports uh, or at the same sport with different angles um, that spreads the risk, minimize the risk and um, we can always uh, check and see why it's not um, working or um, why it's not uh, producing profit. So this is a website that I'm referring to, soccerwidow.com. I've mentioned that in the past. Um, you can uh, visit the site and search here for ratcheting, as it says over here. It will explain you exactly what it means and how it works. So I will tell you how I use it right now. So if we check our Google Sheet, um, that um, the last two three weeks, I'm very happy that um, uh, most of the times there are around 5 to 15 people inside. That means people are checking it, uh, people are trying to learn from it, probably people are using it and make money because this makes money even uh, though we're at the same level um, the last week. So we follow this trend line, but it seems that it's going up and down. So um, it's it's working. So in the last 67 days, we have 79% profit and uh, it's been working. So what it's not working right now is that this hockey uh, model is producing like minus 22 units up to now. Uh, but I know that hockey model was uh, the last two years, the most successful model that I have. Um, so we will improve it somehow. So let's speak about ratcheting and what is this. Um, I don't prefer to use Kelly's criterion when I use a model. Why? Um, because it's very hard to predict your, your expected value. Uh, you may have a model that tells you you have a probability of 70% and the odds may be 60%. So you say I have 10% expected value, but this is not correct. You never know the probability of a match. You can never have a better model than the bookmakers. It's very, very hard. Um, I'm, I'm sure, 100%, I'm never going to make a better model than the bookmakers. Even if the bookmakers um, have factored already um, the, the amount staked from, from some bettors, um, and they adjust their values according to what is staked, um, even by doing that, our model can never be better. At, at least my model can never be better than their model. So I can never trust the expected value that I'm... I can, I can never guess it. So Kelly's criterion for me will be a guess of value. And uh, the, um, the, the amount, the percentage of my bankroll um, will never be correct. So what I prefer to do is this ratcheting method. Um, it's the same like as using 2% of not your initial bankroll, but the bankroll that you, um, that you have uh, at the start of every day. So let's say that we start with 100 units. Uh, we set it as current step, 100 units. And then we use 2% of these 100 units for this day. Um, at the end of the day, if um, in every match that we bet two, two units, 2% 2 of the initial bankroll of, of, or of this current step, if we are um, 110, for example, then at the start of the next day, um, we 
uh, recalculate this current step. So the current step will be 110. And the stake 2% that we will use uh, will be 2% of, of the current step, 110. So it will be 2.2, or it will be bigger than this. Um, so next day, uh, let's say uh, we have 120. So we update the current step, and then we use for this day uh, the 2% of 120 of the step every day. So by doing that, um, we use our bankroll. Uh, the, the bigger the bankroll, the more um, uh, stake. The, the bigger the stake. So let's say that we have. Uh, we start with a current step of a hundred, um, and next day we are. Uh, our bankroll is ninety, so we lost ten percent. Um, if we are using just two percent of our current bankroll we would have to make it 90, the current step, and um, the 2% of the 90 uh, would be less than what we started. Um, but we know that we have some models um, that the, the hit rate is bigger than the odds, so we have value. So eventually, if we go down, sometime the, the hit rate will be bigger than the odds. So. We know that we have this. Uh, so we know that we have the value. So eventually it will go up. So that's why I prefer ratcheting. Ratcheting says that we should use the same uh, percentage of the current step that we have until we reach the bankroll reaches the seventy-five percent of the the current step. So if our bankroll is um, seventy-five then we will recalculate everything and use 2% of the 75. So we will replace the current step there if our bankroll is 75. So um, we, we don't recalculate every day. We only recalculate if at the start of the day the current step is bigger um, and if um, at any time, um, at, at, at any day, at the end of any day, uh, we see that our bankroll is less than 25% uh, of the current step. So uh, for me, this is the best way to do it because um, if you make uh, simulations, um, how uh, um, um, Kelly's criterion works and um, how is 2% of the bankroll works, the results are, are um, around similar. Um, the, the only thing with uh, Kelly's criterion is that uh, you cannot predict your value and perhaps your bankroll um, goes down faster. So if we, you have a model that you find the value, for me ratcheting is the best way because we cannot predict, at least this is what I believe, I cannot predict the expected value. So right now, uh, let's take a bit. Um, why our um, hockey model is not working that well. So if we check here um, the results, we see that at hockey we have 108 bets, um, 58 wins, 50 losses, 53.7% um, uh, hit rate, um, and um, the odds that we use are around 1.72. Um, and the average odds are 57.98%. Um, this 1.72 equals to that number. So it means that we don't find the value. We're minus 4.27 and we have lost 22 units up to now. So um, how, we, how we see what's the problem? At the beginning, we see that it's only 108 bets, so we cannot judge the model. Um, but if this goes around to 300, that means, and, and this continues, that means that uh, we need to make some modifications to our model. Uh, that's very important to track all your bets and try to separate, uh, separate them. Uh, so if we go to the portfolio tab over here, <clears throat> And uh, uh, this is um, how we can um, see at each league um, what's percentage, what 
are the bets and if it's successful or not. <clears throat> we will speak about it in the future videos. But um, those are the hockey leagues that I follow. Um, the Russian KHL, um, the Swedish SHL, then NHL, and then again the Russian VHL. So we see that in the Russian KHL we find the value. So it's perfect, even if we're minus two unit. Uh, we only have 33 bets, so it's okay, no problem. So this doesn't mean that our hockey model is that bad. Um, then we go to the Swedish Hockey League and we see that we find the value again. But then we see that at the um, uh, National Hockey League there in USA, uh, we don't find the value. It's 11, uh, minus 11%. And we have lost 19.44 units. So the problem is that um, in NHL, we have only 52 bets um, and we have 50% hit rate, which is very small, even though we should have had 61 and more. So the problem there um, is NHL. So how we do it, how we correct it. In order to correct it, uh, we need to... Uh, say that we'll use the same percentage that uh, our AI software gives us, but we will chase bigger odds. So instead of starting 145, I will start with 160, 155 or 160. Uh, that means with the same percentage, it will be like 70%, 65%, I don't know. Um, the, the odds that we will aim for will be bigger. So that means our picks, according to our model, we have will have bigger value. Um, so the first modification that I will do will be this. So um, in the hockey model, I will raise the odds that we pick matches. Um, if we still see that uh, the model is not producing profit, one thing is to recalibrate the model, uh, check the features again, try to do training again and come up with better results, or you can just say, um, I'm not using NHL. I'm only going to use KHL and SHL for now. And when by itself there is a trend that's going up, that means our model is trained better and works for NHL as well. You can follow, we can follow this. Or if we prefer, we can just um, uh, stop playing hockey for now until it gets better. Uh, but um, I believe in the hockey model. Uh, because I've used it for two years and it seems it's working. Uh, so I, I will be using it. I will be I'm still going to be adding uh, picks in here. And um, let's see how it goes. So why is it so important to uh, have a diversified portfolio? Um, and by saying diversified portfolio, I mean you should bet in many angles. You should have um, different models. You should have model um, that you try to attack a market from different angles. So it can be over-unders, it can be uh, points, um, it can be winning percentage, it can be football, basketball, hockey, any sports that you, you want to do. Um, and um, the more uh, diversified your portfolio is, um, the, the better because you spread the risk. Um, so it's, it's like uh, betting all your money in one bet or betting uh, one tenth of your money in 10 different uncles. Um, some um, uncles will be good that you succeed, some others will not. Um, so if um, basketball, for example, if one uncle is not working, you can find the problem and see why it's not working and improve it. So it's good to divide and conquer. Uh, divide your bets into smaller ones, divide your models into smaller ones, see which ones are working and um, uh, improve everything at least at, at, uh, until you find um, the better scenario. Uh, so for me, um, and generally, um, when you do investments, you need to have a, um, a portfolio that you spread the risk. Uh, you never go, because there are probabilities, you can never be sure about anything. Even if you have 99% probability for a match and you say, I'm going to put all my money there, 
No, there is 1% that you may lose all your money. Uh, and you, you never know that it's 99%. So you can you cannot use Kelly's criterion um, because we just uh, make assumptions. We make guesses. So this is my take on that. Um, I'm glad that you follow the Google Sheet. In the future, I'm going to try to activate a bit more my uh, Facebook page, probably, or Twitter. I don't know how we'll do it. Um, because I see there are people that uh, would like to discuss the pics, um, have questions about the models. And I would like also to check what you're doing, to check your models, to probably learn something for, from your suggestions, or I don't know. I, I still improve myself so we can improve uh, together. Um, I appreciate all of you because all your questions are uh, important. Um, uh, the last days, uh, it was a guy also that found a mistake in here because I had um, made a mistake in a result. I, I'm glad um, that you've been checking it um, and I appreciate uh, the time that you spent um, helping each other and um, I hope that um, we can produce something better and all of us are, uh, become successful uh, betters. Good luck. Uh, see you in the next video.